Lester was killed by a gay, who was also a colonel, and it seemed like he did it for no apparent reason. There are several movies which had great atmospheres, but left the audience in uncomfortable doubt about the motives of main characters and the main idea of the movies. These movies do carry a message and have consistency. Let's start from American Beauty, as because in order to understand something, one has to go from simple to complex. Family, community, town, and you shall see that the movies have a lot of similarities. How did Lester manage to let his killer get so close? How did he become deaf and senseless? Who induced an altered state of consciousness on Lester? And how he, or she, did it? Oh, what is this? Fucking gay pride parade? The Colonel, many people see that kind of man as an example of true masculinity. Many people see that kind of man as little intellectually dumb, but still very manly. Colonel Frank Fitz, U.S. Marine Corps. Welcome to the neighborhood, sir. This is not right. This type of person is not a man at all. It seems that the way how eager and recklessly Colonel smashes his son is a sign of a brutal man. Bullshit. The real man never hits recklessly. The real man never tries to spill blood. Only a harridan hits to bleed. Colonel hits like a harridan. This type of person is very common. For example, if you attended martial arts training for long enough, you might see this kind of person there. In sparring, they fight with purpose to injure their mate, break his bones, or make the person bleed. Good martial arts sections are created for other reasons. No surprise why coaches kick them out of their section. Coaches kick them out because they are not worth time spent on them. No place for a harridan in men's art. A man may hit someone in an effort to help him to understand. Harpy hits simply as she hates. There's more evidence that proves that Colonel is the classic example of a harridan. A typical impudent woman. Every marriage starts the same way. A woman marries someone she dislikes. Every philosopher knows that in relations only one loves. Other allows one to love. Immutable rule. If it's she who is in love, she fails to make him marry her. But if it's he who is in love, she succeeds in her efforts to make him marry her. Every marriage starts the same way. She marries someone she dislikes. He romances her, gives her gifts, tries to adapt to her, and tries to please her. Everyone is familiar with this. Everyone knows how this happens. However, in shitty films, films for a retarded audience, it's shown that prior to marriage, she also romances him, loves him, or at least highlights him among the others. In real life, it is a rare occasion when she depicts him as her love and interest. Rare bride makes that pre-wedding gift to her groom, because a woman thinks that it is him who owes her everything. Because a woman thinks that her groom is a stupid, manageable freak, and in many cases she is right, she thinks that her freak owes her a privilege to be around her. That's why she demands something over and over again, demands money, demands attention, and pleasing, and demands her boorishness be tolerated. Listen, just do me a favor. Act happy tonight. I am happy, honey. Why aren't you in your office? Because I'm here. You making fun of me? What is it, Doris? How dare you speak to me that way in front of her, and I'm... Most of the men stay in this state, state of a mule, permanently, until they die. But not all of the men. Some manage to swap roles, and he becomes the one who is the impudent Haradin. Don't you laugh at me! I'm your mother, boy. When a woman loses her mind and her boorishness, when her bitchiness becomes too obvious to be unnoticed, some men try to make, as they say, the revolution. They say they stand their men's rights, when in fact it is just a swap of local roles. The roles stay the same, but now he plays impudent Haradin and she must serve him and he thinks that everything is allowed for him now. <laughs> Ancestors for a long time noticed these patterns and made a map. The ensemble of four roles, the typical dark family, the quadro. The position of an impudent woman, so-called man, can obtain only under specific circumstances. For example, if he exposed his significant other in a cheating, in an adultery that she committed during the relationship, the fact of cheating being exposed is not enough. He must have the moral right and power to convict her. 
Many men are aware of the suspicious activity of their wives, but they prefer not to think about it. And every woman knows if a husband cheats on her, that they are totally okay with it. I wasn't there, I swear. Fucking bastard. I've known about this affair. I've known about this affair all along. <laughs> if a man has cheated on her on his own, he has no moral right and power to convict her, and he stays in the mule state. That means if a woman in some family or relationship acts very impudent, it means that her husband does not know about her cheating. Or he does know, but he cheated and betrayed on his own too. Look at here. I know about you and George, and maybe somebody else. You're going down. Life in prison. He knows. I'll see you later at my place. That is exactly what we have in the case of the former U.S. Army Colonel in American Beauty. Most probably he stays in Sagittarius State for a long time, and as a natural result, his son and wife become an ultimate pile of shit. They became even worse kind of shit, as if they would become if his wife would be the one in the role of the impudent women, like we see in common families. Everyone in his family is antisocial. His son, for example, is a drug dealer, molester in grain. This shit. Even worse, it's he is a defleurator, fucks virgins. He is the person who actively helps girls to become sluts, gain secrets, and lose the ability to become a truly intimate partner with their future husbands forever. In the film, he defleurates her. It just seems that they are together forever. Their union is false. The flower girl never stays with the one who defleurates her. Look, I'm not gonna sit here for that shit. Here is the wife of the colonel. She denied the role of the mule within the quadro and decided to become the fish, tapeworm infested fish. Mom, I want you to meet somebody. Mom. Yes. I want you to meet somebody. This is Jane. It is important to note Hi. that she often loses the contact with reality. Where is she if not in reality? Is she in deep thought about physics problems, or maybe sociology? Hell no. She is not in the partnership, and rational thought process is not available for her. All she is capable of is fantasies. All she can do is flip upside down her facts of her own life in her head. Facts of her sexual life especially. For example, she was defloated by some retarded junkie just like her son. It is not an accident that her son was nurtured to become that kind of person but she over-fantasized everything in her head to look like she was defloated by noble and handsome Earl in his huge mansion at giant-sized bed covered with rose petals. That is how the woman, whose cheating was exposed and convicted by her husband, looks like. I'm sorry, what? What's the matter with you, Twardowski? Don't you like our early morning? Mom, nobody said anything. Well, I didn't like him at first. Oh, I didn't like him at first. I didn't like him now. I'm sorry. I'm still out first. Bye. Sorry! If Colonel has cheated on his own, too, he would not find moral right to convict her and kick her down from the dark kingdom throne. In order to maintain their government in the house safely, every wife attempts to lure her significant other into adultery, at least once. There are plenty of methods to do so. For example, she may repeatedly, with an excited intonation, tell the story about her night dream where her husband fucks another woman. If it is not enough, then she might tone down their sex life. If it is still not enough, she will restore the sex life quality and tell that she had that dream again and imply that it turned her on. Or another method, during some TV show or movie watched together, she might adore the hero who cheats on his wife. Or even simpler, she might make her husband hear her phone conversation where she says that the real man always cheats. Or thousands of other methods. If the husband is a mule and lives pleasing his wife, in order to become her perfect match, he will find someone to suck his dick or fuck. That's it. Now he would try to hide his betrayal, and now he would not find the moral right to convict his wife in cheating on him. Now even if he sees the evidence of her being with another man, he would ignore it. His subconscious will hide traces of her adultery together and with the traces of his own adultery. And now nothing can stop her from being imprudent and governed until her last days. Everyone knows the situations where it is obvious to everyone around the husband that his wife is cheating on him. Obvious to everyone except the husband. Every wife tries to lure her husband into adultery. 
Most usually she implies that she is turned on only by real man, and real man always cheats. But some husbands don't fall into this provocation and stay away from cheating. Then the wife might start to work harder. She might bring her female friend into the house, get a liquor and lure her husband to have a drink with them. When the husband and her female friend got drunk, wife gets lost in the bathroom or goes for a long phone conversation in another room in order to leave her female friend and her husband together in one room. Or even harder, she might offer her female friend to stay the night and sleep in one bed altogether. And because a woman turns on another woman much harder and stronger than on a man, husband finds himself in the atmosphere of such sexual tension he has never before seen in his life. True story. A dog never mounts an unwilling bitch. Very few can resist the temptation. All wife has to do is to pretend dead drunk and asleep. Now wife can do whatever she wants. Now she can treat her husband as complete shit and slave. Perfect combination. Bravo. There are different combinations and methods different wives use against their husbands, but the strategy is the same every time. Mom. Hello. I don't eat bacon, remember? I'm sorry, I must have forgotten. This particular wife failed to lure her husband into adultery, and he managed to expose her cheating on him and started to beat her every time she did something the way he does not like. Notice how nervous she is. Are you expecting anyone? No. No. She failed to find another man who would adopt her and decided to stay with him and tolerate him. Now her cheating takes place only in her fantasies. As it was said before, Colonel is nowhere close to being a man. He plays the role of a woman in the family, and he lives under Sagittarius behavior pattern. His wife did not run away from him and did not commit suicide only because she feels comfortable in their situation. The only thing changed for them is their roles, but they still belong to the Quadro. Life in the atmosphere of dullness and stupidity. A woman runs or commits suicide only when someone is forcing her to leave the Quadro and start personal development. Any change within the Quadro is okay for her, as of because no one in the Quadro can grow and force her to start her development. All of them stay dull and stupid. In the film, it's also shown that Colonel went further into his degradation. He became a gay. He attempted to turn into a woman, not just by behavior in the family, but also as a person. Become a woman completely. Colonel is not interesting for us as a person. He is interesting only as a type. You will never meet this particular colonel, but the type of this colonel is pretty common. Here is an example, his analog, Wormox Unter Officer Roletter. Roletter is the only one from his battalion who managed to survive in the battle. Here is Roletter speaks about his wife. Not every woman would tolerate and comply with an order to take oars and row the boat until she gets too exhausted to show up and act up. Not every husband poses the power to manage wife's attitude that way. Very few. Only those who exposed and convicted their wives in cheating and were not in any adultery by themselves. Most probably Rolator did not share this story about her cheating with his comrades, and he is not developed enough to kick her out after this incident. There are many husbands that do know that their wives cheat on them, but very few of them have the moral power to make her row a boat or do any other work. Only those who did not cheat by themselves. Only those who understand that cheating is a betrayal, that cheating is not acceptable, that both of spouses have no right to cheat. Rolator is one of those kinds of man. The fact that his wife was cheating left not fantasies about her in his mind. He finally understood that his wife is a bag of garbage. His mind was free of sweet fantasies. People die in war because their minds are too busy with memories and fantasies to react properly on a retreat. Rolator became free of that and he managed to survive. There were a lot of people in his battalion who knew their wives cheated on them, but kept living as normal because they cheated themselves. All of them thought that is okay and they kept fantasizing about their spouses. All of them were liquidated in war. Cause and effect. It's okay for white color to be black. It is okay to sit in a dangerous place. More betrayals you do, less adequate you become, and more probably you will run into a bullet. The fact that Rolator's wife was cheating on him is proved by the fact that she cheated on him again. Bombe angriff? 
So kann man es auch nennen. Während ich hier für die Heimat den Arsch hinhalte, lässt sie meine Frau mit dem Matzosen ein. Ach. Bestimmt nur Verleumdung. Mein Alte schreibt es mir höchst persönlich. Willst du mir sagen, bevor es die Schwiegermutter schreibt? You can find women who have never had an affair, but it is hard to find a woman who has had just one. Unter Officer Rolator and Colonel are the same types. Both of them were brave enough to find the truth about their women, and both of them failed the next step, to leave the Quadro. And both of them had similar life circumstances that helped them to secure their position of imprudent women, the Sagittarius. Both of them were commanding army recruits. Recruits are the same thing as mommy's boys. Mommy's boys are capable of complying only with an imprudent woman. In order to command recruits or mommy's boys, one has to be or become an imprudent woman. The colonel was more successful in his service than Unter Officer Rolator. Colonel is the higher rank than an officer, so as a matter of course, colonel attempted to become a woman completely. Fun fact that this USA Navy colonel adored the Third Reich much heavier than Wormach's Unter Officer Rolator. Turn it over. It's like official state China of the Third Reich. There's a whole subculture of people who collect this Nazi shit. Colonel worshipped the Third Reich, and now, and there is how Rulator, the only survivor from the whole battalion, treated the Third Reich. In diesem saumäßigen Aufzug wollen Sie ein Abzeichen des Führers entgegennehmen? Jawohl, Herr Leutnant. Das Abzeichen wird nicht verliehen. Bataillon, rührt euch! Rulator was in the role of imprudent woman only while he was binding with his wife. But that bound collapsed. Now he feels need to find another role. Now he turns into the mule and becomes a daddy for this kid. It was a big luck for Rollator that his wife left him at this stage of the war. In the first part of the war, Germans were in offense position, and it is suitable to be an imprudent woman when you go on offensive. As of because all people who live their lives in the Quadro, not an imprudent woman position, prostrate in front of an imprudent woman or Sagittarius. All these other elements of the Quadro are powerless and surrender to Sagittarius. The same happened to Russians. They were dropping like flies. Everything changed in Stalingrad. Imprudent women started to die, and they died foremost, as of because imprudent woman habitually charges in blindly and stupidly. Luckily for Rolator, his wife left him exactly at that moment, and he changed himself to be more adequate, to surrender. Let's sum up. Rolator was in the position of an imprudent woman. He was in the position because he wanted to be there. But as soon as his wife left him, he no longer wanted to be there. Or more probably during the war, he ceased to want to be in this position and started to consider leaving the Quadro to become a man in the high meaning of the world. And as a result, his wife left him. Basically, he grew up to the level of Lester. Same story in American Beauty. Lester decided to become a harridan at his house and at work, but he was immediately fired for that attitude. And he ceased to want to be a harridan. It's a victory that not every man can achieve. You got a minute. For you, Brad, I got five. Lester works in a magazine for 14 years, but he decided to stop obligingly conjecture what publication material his boss would like to have in their next release. You gotta spend money to make money, right? Exactly. To stop pleasing his boss, the way how peasant pleases his feudal, he started to demonstrate that the boss is an idiot and suggest himself as the true ballsy and overall better candidate to be the boss in the magazine. Like the time that Mr. Flournoy used the company MasterCard to pay for that hooker, and then she used the card numbers and stayed at the St. Regis for, what was it, like three months? That's unsubstantiated That's gossip. That's $50,000. That's somebody's salary. That's somebody who's going to get fired because Craig has to pay... Long-standing peasant Lester started to argue his boss out of nowhere. Nothing happens out of nowhere. There were serious reasons for that drastic change. There was a very important person in his life, in his family, one who was not fully integrated into the Quadro, his young daughter, the only island of something natural and somewhat pure in his life. Jenny, what happened? We used to be pals. The only place where he could rest. But she made her mind to become a slut. That's it. No place for natural relations between her and Lester left. Lester felt bad. 
he starts to flounce around in an effort to get back at least that tiny piece of natural happiness he had before. He had no solid theory of human relations. He could not argue out what to do with his life. In other words, he is a regular guy. So the first thing that came into his mind was to become a harridan. No surprise why long-standing peasant failed to achieve it. His whole life he was an opposite, a servant. He was doing his job, while feudal-type bosses were gaining experience in corrupting themselves and molesting others. Servants obey only corrupted molesters. That's why Lester was fired, and no one from co-servants gave him any support. His workplace is using feudal-type group, entertainment magazine. No mercy for Lester. He shouldn't try to act like a harridan. After that, he tries to find happiness by working in fast food, like he did when he was a teenager. I have fast food experience. Yeah, like 20 years ago. Happiness comes from a natural way of life. First, in a simple job is natural, and it's a source of happiness for every teenager. When I was your age, I flipped burgers all summer just to be able to buy an 8-track. That sucks. No, actually, it was great. Properly speaking, happiness comes when you climb on the next level. On the next natural level of your own current one. That means that a job that was a source of happiness for a teenager can't make a 40-year-old man happy. Lester fails again, not a surprise. Closer to the end of the film, Lester had stuck. He did not want to serve as any of the elements of the quadro, and he refused to do the only right thing he could do. The right thing, the thing proven and tested for centuries and millenniums by countless honorable men. To leave and go his own way. Take a backpack and just go in any direction. Become a pilgrim. But one cannot just interrupt the quadro and get away with it. He has to run, or the quadro will strike back. And Lester got shot. He was guilty of interrupting atmosphere of dumb pleasure living in the quadro. His wife, his daughter, his gay couple neighbor, and faggot colonel could not continue their regular life. While Lester was a part of the quadro, everyone was comfortable. Comfort for them is when the quadro is strong and operating. Comfort for them is being in a dumb and pleasant state of mind. Comfort for them is to be blind and driven by instincts, be ignorant and self-adored. But as soon as Lester has started popping around without strict role in the quadro, pleasure was interrupted. And in the film, it's perfectly shown that everybody around attempted to bring him back into the quadro. They even were ready to promote him into more pleasant, pleasant in the dark world's point of view, role. Instead of being a mule and provider, he was offered to become the Capricorn, the beast. The beast can be in two states, active and passive. Passive state is doing sport or drugs. And the first one who attempted to screw up Lester was him. He tried to sell him drugs, How and much? Lester bought it. He bought it because he was on this hook earlier in his Jesus. life. Jesus. Things have changed since 1973. And while being high, Lester started his bodybuilding. Basically, he accepted the role of the beast, its passive state. Soon afterwards, his wife and daughter attempted to turn him into an active state. Let's see how they did it. Why did his wife take him to the performance? Well, what makes you so sure she wants us to be there? Does she ask us to come? Of course not. She doesn't want us to know how important this is to her. And to Lester, this is important. Now I'm sensing a real distance growing between you and Jane. Gross. Why did she start to care? The plan was to find someone to fuck her husband. Lester has to be molested. Lester has to be corrupted. Sex with a virgin is big treachery. Lester would fall tremendously after that. That was her design. And because Lester has no experience in deflowering girls yet, he has to be blind to commit it. So it was planned to make him crush on her, fall in love. The technology of love spell against hen-picked man is simple. If a group of women wishes a man to fall in love, he obeys and comes to believe that he has sincerely crushed on someone and believes that he did it on his own. This is my friend, Angela Hayes. Okay, good to meet you. That is exactly what we have in the film. His wife, his daughter, and a wannabe slut were wishing him to fall in love. Lester has fallen in love with her and started to prepare himself for their first intercourse. Next who attempted to screw Lester was US Navy Colonel. Deflorators usually are gays. Probably one becomes gay first and then he becomes a deflorator. No surprise why Colonel paid him a visit with a sodomy offer. 
Of course, someone silly might say that Colonel urged to have sodomy with someone out of the blue. Of course not. He was just serving the most corrupted person, their local matriarch, and her plan to make Lester become the defleurator. Colonel is her lackey. He serves the quadro. But Lester stood against him and the sodomy offer, oh, and he stood against the wannabe deflowered slap. <laughs> You're kidding. I'm sorry. I still want to do it. I just... Basically, he stood against their whole team. Their attempt to turn Lester into the active state of Beast failed. One who refused to be in the active state of the Beast eventually will refuse passive state too and he will have a chance to leave the Quadro. That's what was happening to Lester in this scene. Someone would say that he is adored by the young look of his daughter. This is not right. For one, in order to leave the Quadro and start going his own way, it is required to have the light aim. It is a mandatory term for a victory. That is exactly what Lester was performing. He was not adored by the young phase of his daughter. He was recalling the time when his daughter was capable of being his friend. He was dreaming about a natural and light relationship. That kind of dream is not acceptable in the society of sluts, liars, faggots, drug dealers, and etc. Lester has to escape from them, or he will be getting shot. And becoming a pilgrim, as it was said earlier, is the best way to do it. Becoming a pilgrim is a good way, and here is why. One might leave the quadro, but where might he go? How to obtain true friends if he never had one? If he even doesn't know what it is to have a true friendship? Finding a true friend in a society of whores and liars is very tricky and the person who spent most of his life living in the Quadro will find fake friends again for sure. It is like riding the big city subway. No matter how many good persons are on the train, if one dirty bum comes in, everyone starts to smell bad. And of course, that bum takes the central seat in the train. In a city, the amount of biofields is so big, they become indistinguishable from one another and they all begin to smell like a bum. That is why the best strategy is to leave the city and get to a lonely place, it is not an accident why the pilgrim in the lonely place is the favorite theme of the best painters of the past. In a lonely place, one has the chance to meet and perceive another lonely, disconnected from the quadro person. Somewhere in the backwoods, on a meteorological station, on some university bio station, etc., one can meet and perceive a different kind of people, talk to them, and make his own mind who is interesting and who is not, whose company grants wide-scale thoughts on things who's not. One who knows that kind of experience would never wish to have a trip on some shitty five-star resort cruise or whatever. Because any kind of such places is nothing other than a dump of whores of both genders. The only place one can have rest is a lonely place. It is also important to mention that the term escape is not correct. The Quadro says that one who escapes to get wisdom, light, and knowledge is a weak person, that he fails to face his problem. But this is not true. The only one who can face and resolve problems is one who has wisdom and knowledge. The term escape can be used, but it should be clear that there is no escape from the quadro. One can only escape to something bright. And of course, very few men have the courage and moral power to escape. For example, Earl Leo Tolstoy, author of War and Peace, was not ready for escape until the age of 80. Finally, he left his family and his ordinary life in the quadro and performed an escape. He did it at night time. At the next morning, this news was on newspapers and the whole country was tracking him down. He died soon afterward. He could not accommodate for his new life, or it was his wife and kids who got him killed. But it is okay. It is better than nothing. It is still a victory, and the next time his new life shall start from the last level he had achieved. One has to run quickly and don't look back. Unter Officer Rolletter escaped successfully. He had to run without warm clothes onto winter's cold. Moreover, he had to cloak himself with efforts to help his dying fellow. Lester was shot by the colonel, but it's shown that the colonel was not the only one who wanted to kill him. Lester's wife was making some passes with a gun, too. And his daughter wished him dead. Put him out of his misery. Want me to kill him for you? Yeah. 
All these three persons make an organic, psycho-energetic structure to receive orders from there if you wish. That is the quadro and how it communicates within itself. But the quadro is not the most dangerous thing in the world. The most dangerous thing is one's own person. It was Lester who decided to be deaf and not hear his killer coming for him. It was Lester who did not eradicate strings that attached him to the quadro and its formal head, his sweet wife. Basically, Lester assisted. Running from the quadro is not as hard as running from yourself. So you better subscribe to our channel and see you next time.